Red Sox. Sox and the Cincinnati Reds. Reds actually coming to town playing pretty good baseball. They've won four of their last five. Overall they are 24 and 29. As Wake mentioned they are not a great road team 10 and 15. But they are just four games back in a mediocre National League Central. Only first place Milwaukee has a winning record in that division. And the Reds have a superior record to both the Cubs and the last place Cardinals. So right now they're thinking well we still have a shot. If they start to get hot and again not playing that badly right now. No they you know they swept the Cubs at the Cubs and. Hey I mean these are the teams you got to beat though I mean we were talking about this in the open and this is what you got to do you got to go against these teams under 500 and you got to bury them they've been 500 against them this season. Let's start the hot streak today. Sometimes when you're playing a team that's leading the division or higher above you you play a little bit better and sometimes you know you're playing a below 500 team you play like a below 500 team sometimes and it's hard to get your mojo going when you're playing somebody that you know you can beat but you got to be careful of these teams that's for sure. Sox at 28 25 and fourth place in the East that's nine and a half behind Tampa Bay. They have eight and oh Shane McClanahan going against the Cubs in Chicago tonight. So the win they go to 40 and 17. You know Baltimore's kind of hanging around there just four games off the pace. I'll tell you what they're incredible too. their payroll is like at the bottom of the league too. And what they're doing with such a small payroll is quite impressive. I mean you look at it, it, the ironic part is the bottom three teams in the AL East have the highest payrolls mm -hmm. by far. They're taking over the Tampa Bay method right. Yeah. They're fig they figured something out but they are a very good team and they're a very good offensive team. You got to be careful pitching against those guys. Cedric Mullins just went on the IL today so that's a blow certainly for Baltimore and Red Sox about to take to the diamond to take on Cincinnati. Here's a look at their lineup. It's brought to you by Nissan. T.J. Friedel is in center field. Matt McLean, the shortstop, hitting 380. Jonathan India at second base. Jake Fraley, the D.H. Stevenson doing the catching. Steer at first. Kevin Newman at third with Will Benson at left, and Stuart Fairchild in right field. Taking on the Red Sox starting pitcher, brought to you by BuyAToyota.com. Brian Bayo, three and two, ERA of four point. 08 and was very sharp last time out against the Angels. I always love watching him pitch. He's got such electric stuff. Let's take a look at the Red Sox defense. We got Devers at third base, Hernandez at shortstop, Valdez at second base, Casas at first. We got Yoshida in left, Duran in center, Toppy in right, and then the battery. Bayou on the mound, McGuire doing the catching. Umpires tonight brought to you by buyatoyota.com. Sean Barber behind home plate. Alan Porter is at first, Jim Wolf at second, Mike Muchlinski is at third. We're available to telecast can be heard in Spanish by selecting the SAP button on your TV remote. SAP is brought to you by Toyota Certified Used Vehicles. The weather, an absolute pleasure. It's only getting warmer too the rest of the week. Presented by Window World of Boston, the official replacement windows of the Boston Red Sox. 66 and sunny. Just delightful here tonight. For the first of this series and then Tampa Bay's coming in for a four game series It'll be the second time we see the Rays that includes a scheduled double header on Saturday. That's weird I've never heard of scheduled double headers unless there was a rain out but they're doing it this year with the new schedule I like it. So we're set to go. Bayo took the loss in Anaheim. Last week, but he went seven strong innings, just two runs, didn't walk anybody. And Wakey, you're not going to be there for that, huh? No. You, you checked out. Oh, yeah. I don't do double headers. <laughs> I don't either until now. I tried to pitch the first game. <laughs> I tried to pitch the first game of a double header, not the second. Oh. Hey, Thursday, we're going to be in the monster seats we are. doing our broadcast. I'm looking forward to that. Me too. Way out there. It'll be watching the game backwards, will be weird. It's going to be a little strange. But it should be a lot of fun. First one in there for a strike. So if you draw a line from the 379 mark straight up, that's where we are, right over that yellow line. That's going to be our press box on a Thursday. Free beers. That's what I'm told. Good. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a fun broadcast. Now that is the show we should want to do. Correct. Yeah, you got the sausage stand right there too. Ooh. We're good. <laughs> like we're set. Sorry, it always goes to food. Right. Real 333 pops that one back out of play. 
The Cincinnati in the middle of the National League pack and run scored. But they are 14th in home runs, so this is not a power hitting team. David Bell, the manager. He's in year number five. Former opponent. Yeah. Do you play against them? I did it. I grew up with. I, so I grew up. You know, they went to the the high school, uh, the Catholic high school, Moeller High School, right next to us. I grew up and played with his brother Ricky. Okay. So no, didn't get a chance to play against Dave. He's a good player. Actually, Fine. maybe they did. Or later on, maybe the Phillies. We played against them. Yes. What a great baseball family, right? I mean, their baseball royalty, the Bell family. Grandfather Gus played 15 years in the big leagues, four All-Star teams. David's dad, Buddy Bell, played 19 years, five All-Star teams. He also managed. David played for 12 major league seasons. Played against his dad and him. You did play for a long time. I did. <laughs> you see that wake? I I just stay cool there. I you know. Say I, I, it's okay. <laughs> you can say it now. You're getting. A, you're getting as old as I am. <laughs> Three two. Served up the middle. Kike near the bag. One away. That's a good little play right there by Kike too. Came and got that ball. Got it on the short hop. A little more reps, you know. Struggle a little bit out there. I think it's just about the reps and moving his feet and coming to get it right there. Sox have been playing pretty good defense. We've gone six games without an error. I don't want to jinx anything, but the play he made in San Diego was incredible. Diving to his right, got up and threw a really quick runner out. Terrific play. <laughs> Looked like a young Tim Wakefield. <laughs> yeah, I wish. <laughs> Here's Matt McLean at 380 with a couple of home runs and a seven game hitting streak. By far their hottest bat coming in. You were watching him take some ground balls before the game. They love this kid, a former first round pick. Yeah, I got to watch him play a little bit against the Cubs series, trying to do a little scouting on the Reds, see what they got. And I'll tell you, he's a, he's a scrappy little player. I mean, swing the bat real well, as you can see with the average, but making the plays. I saw, I saw a backhand play he made that was real smooth and nice, and saw another play to his left. And, you know, you kind of just watch a little bit of the defense and go, wow, that guy could pick it a little bit. And then. And he can swing it a little bit. There's the offense. Yeah, there's an eight game hitting streak. He's only hitting about 500 during that. I was talking with Chris Welsh, who's been doing the Reds on TV for years. And we've gone around the roster, and I said, What about McLean? Is that Dustin Pedroia or a Pedroia kind of player? He said, Absolutely. That's a great compliment, that's for sure. Speedy was one of the best. Never, never gave up an at bat, hustled the whole time he was on that field. Jonathan India 290 with five home runs. Former rookie of the year just a couple of years ago. And certainly on the all hair team. <laughs> yeah, he was he was not let <laughs> he was not letting it breathe there just like his hair. But I'll tell you that they'll get on base though. Uh, these guys might not have the power, but you know, they're fifth in, in baseball with a 333 on base percentage. One down. Passed him. 94 with the sinker. Cincinnati lost a hundred games right on the nose last year. So rebuilding with a lot of prospects, a lot of guys coming up through the system, getting an opportunity to play the last couple of years. Did he offer? No, he didn't. Alan Porter said no. He is coming out the gate swinging, so this is where you got to make good pitches right here because he's so aggressive. To knock him something right in the middle. Still think he can throw him a ball and he might swing at it. <laughs> Definitely. Right down to the end of the clock, he delivered and fouled away, and that one came back to bite McGuire a bit. Reese hobbled for a moment. Off the toe. See where yeah. this hits him. Yeah, oh, that's oh. a nasty sinker. Wow, he hit that behind him. He did. That's going to leave a mark later. 
One and two. And Bale looking for his first K in the book. And he struck out eight, didn't walk anybody in the last one. And left that one down and away. His strike percentage was really, really good last start. Uh, just, I, I feel like he's getting the feel of being able to throw strikes when he wants to and throw balls when he needs to. I thought he did a great job for the most part keeping the ball down in Anaheim. You know, a lot of yeah. pitches just below the knee or at the hollow of the knee. He's gone to three and two here. Three and two. Yeah, and the most impressive thing about last start was that was his first start without having any walks. That that's the thing that's hurt him the most. So, gotta stay away from that early on too. Played back in. That was a timed pick too. McGuire right there dropped the glove. So if you're watching at home, if you get that camera angle when the catcher does that, that's a pick. That's the pick. Runner does go. Little ground ball. Bale will have to go to first. They sent the runner and got him. McLean down to second with two away. And we'll bring up the DH, the cleanup man, Jake Fraley. He's driven in 34 runs. So this is his spot. Just getting underway here in the top half of the first inning. Joey Votto has not played a game for the Reds this year, limited to 91 last year because of rotator cuff surgery. That's 342 home runs and a great career. He is here. I saw him working out this morning, taking ground balls at first, so hopefully he's started to recover a little bit. Continuing his rehab. Red Sox will not mind missing him in this series. Here's the 1 0 pitch from Brian Bale. And inside. Yeah, Fraley is the guy that is the reason for the home run selling, too. I don't know if you've seen any Reds games, but when they hit a home run, they go straight Vikings. Oh, really? This guy looks exactly like a Viking. I think there's a little question of that. As he lays off, throw down. He does get back in. McLean on the dive. Trying to catch him napping. And yeah, this is quick too. He got it and Kike. Kike, he was on his heels a little bit and he had to make up that ground. It's always nerve-wracking as an infielder when they throw down like that and you're not at the base yet. 3-0. <laughs> Taking all the way in for strike on Fraley. <laughs> what was that? That's a deke that will never get a base runner. No. Pretty funny though. McLean off second. 3 1. A little blooper foul out of play. Went with a change up there. Might he get it again? Runner at second, two down. Toronto and Milwaukee are in the first inning. Milwaukee has jumped in front 2 nothing. And the 3 2 to the DH. Hammered into oh, the Red wow. Sox dugout. Watch. Man, that was a screamer. And looks like everybody's okay. Pablo Reyes there changing his position. Probably not a bad idea. That's why that's why you sit on the top step right here because this ball is a rocket. Oh. Did they almost get JT? <laughs> he didn't even know. <laughs> Three two. It's Willie Adamas the other day who got hit. Mm. Suffered a concussion. I saw that. You always got to pay attention. Oh, yeah. I mean, those balls come in real hot in those dugouts. Here's the eighth pitch of the at bat. And he walks him. 
Again, something he didn't do in seven innings the other day in Anaheim. So first and second, Tyler Stevenson, the catcher, 250 hitter with a couple of home runs. Tonight, prior to the game, the Red Sox celebrated Jewish Heritage Night. Members of the Jewish community taking part in the national anthem and ceremonial first pitch. Red Sox highlighting the contributions of the local Jewish community on our history and culture. And Kevin Euclid, the hitting coach for Team Israel, watching those festivities. Yeah. Teaching you guys a little Hebrew. Taught Wake, it's right to left, yeah. how you read it. So as you always know, Wake, when you were like, man, this guy's a little backwards. Well, yeah, I mean, I grew up uh, reading Hebrew backwards. So, you know, that's how it works. That's how it was supposed to be read back in the day, and we changed it. Notable current Jewish players. Two on and two out. Yeah, there was a lot on that list that we wish were on Team Israel, too. I'll bet. I mean, there was, the, it, that was, that was tough as a coach. You're looking out there, you're like, man, I just wish some of these guys would play. Now Dave Bush would like a word with the youngster who was a little wild here early on trying to lock in. Who is your best hitter on Team Israel? Well, Burvis was uh, probably, you know, he's with the Cubs now. He was one of our better hitters there. And then you got Jock Peterson. Jock was on the team. So those two, you know, then uh, you know, Stubbs, who's with the Phillies. But, uh, you know, we had a lot of young guys, you know. So it, it was kind of fun just to see these young players and, and the opportunity to play in front of the fan base that was there in Miami was absolutely phenomenal. I mean, it was so electric that some of these guys, they might not ever make it to the major leagues, but they got a big league experience in that WBC. Which was a huge hit. You know, the entire tournament. Some of the festivities before the game. Not a beautiful night here at Fenway. We'll count 2 and 0 on Stevenson. Bayo could really use a ground ball right at somebody and get out of this thing or a strikeout. That went in there for a strike to make it two and one. He's got McLean at second, Fraley on at first. And then three and one. He is one pitch away from. Walking another guy and loading him up. And he's already at 30 pitches, which is not a good sign in the first inning. You want to try to get out of this unscathed and get back in the dugout as fast as possible. No, sir. That is ball four. And they're all filled up back to back walks. Spencer Steer will be next. This is a guy with an 11 game on base streak. During that, he's hitting 396. So look out. Overall, 284, seven home runs, has a little bit of pop. No place to put him. McLean, Fraley, and Stevenson loading him up for Cincinnati. Strike one. There we go. You know, sometimes coming out of the bullpen, you got, you know, you think you got your good stuff, and you get the first guy out in a base hit. Another out, then a walk, then another walk. Ground ball sharply, but right to Kike. Shovels for the out, and Bayo does get out of it despite loading him up. Fear for Alex Verdugo, then Devers turning Yoshida. Duran out of the five spot, Casa sitting sixth. Kike seventh, Valdez in the eight hole, and McGuire batting ninth. And taking on the Cincinnati Reds starting pitcher brought to you by PNC Bank, helping to make banking easier. Ben Lively. Two and two, ERA at 2.65. Very solid at his most recent outing against St. Louis, a 10 to 3 win. Went six, five hits, two runs. He struck out eight. Well, he started out the way he's like to pitch. He likes to use that that sinker to the arm side for you know the four seam fastball that he uses. Likes to throw it into lefties away from righties. Rymel trying to go up the middle. India there for the stop one away. Here's the Reds defense presented by Audi. We got Newman at third base, McLean at shortstop, India at second, Steer at first. 
Benson in left, Friedel in center, Fairchild in right, and the battery. Lively on the bound, Stevenson doing the catch. Rafi at 242 with 13 home runs. 0 for 5 Sunday in his return after missing a couple of games with a tight calf. He crushed two home runs to start the road trip in San Diego, but did not drive in a run after that. High fly center field. It hangs up though. Friedel is right there, barely moving. Two away. And we'll send up Justin Turner. So the Sox went four and five on the trip. Out to the West Coast and Arizona. You'll take that. Yeah, I mean, you won two series, you know, it's always hard when you don't get that, you know, that, that one series again. The Angel series was tough, right? That's the one you get, you just gotta get that win and gotta you, can, you know, this getting swept is the hard part. But you're seeing that a lot more here too, like this year. Yeah, you know, they they go on these runs and then they'll get swept. You know, you gotta avoid those sweeps. And they've been swept four times. Yeah, you just try to avoid that as much as possible. It's, I mean, it's hard. You're on the road. You're, you know, out there for ten days. And, you know, with that, yeah, that one game they, they could have won in uh, Anaheim would have been fantastic. Other than the couple of games in San Diego, though, the Red Sox really didn't score very much. They had a team-wide power outage. Only scored 15 runs the last seven games of the trip. They're shut out a couple times. Very odd to see a good hitting team. You know, all go cold at the same time. It's weird. It's sometimes the pitching goes cold, but the offense stays hot, and or vice versa. And it seemed like it was just, just a weird dynamic. Know, maybe traveling out there, it's, it's the jet lag hits you. The second series, you're out there in the West Coast. It's difficult sometimes. I don't think fans typically want to hear much of that, but there's there's truth in it. Hitting is contagious. No matter what, it's something about it. It's just. Lineups. I mean, you'll put guys in that are 240 hitters, and they get in a good lineup. They become 270 hitters. It's 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 a weird thing. It's just, and when it goes bad, it goes bad. Flared out to right. Fairchild in to make the catch, and that's all for the Sox in the first inning. Store sign up at Nesson.com slash home run trivia. See official rules online for details. Presented by Leader Bank member FDIC equal housing lender. Back here in Boston, still scoreless here in the top of the second inning. And guys, Jaron Duran will be on deck in the home half of the second inning. And his offense has hit a bit of a rough patch over his last seven games. Just two for 27 with 14 strikeouts. And after he debuted, statistically, he was one of the league's best hitters on April the 17th. And I talked with hitting coach Pete Fatsy about what he's seen from him lately. And if teams are approaching him any differently, and he says, you know, he's really done a good job with the strike zone. For me, it's just managing plate discipline. He didn't think there was a huge difference in how he's being approached. Just managing the discipline and the direction in his swing, he says. And that's something that they work on a daily basis. Fatsy says, Duran will be all right. We'll see what happens here tonight. Looking to find his groove again, guys. A three for 31 on a road trip. A lot of strikeouts. Struck out 15 times. So trying to get back to that good swing of his before the Red Sox went west. Kevin Newman will take a pitch outside, two and two. Meanwhile, Bayo threw a lot of pitches in the first inning, 33. Trying to pull it together on a hill. It's a ground ball foul. Yeah, you don't want him having another 33 pitch inning in the second. You, you know, it's, you got to have a little bit more efficiency when you're getting. I understand that sometimes in the first inning you try to find your groove and things speed up on you once in a while, but uh, you got to you got to control that that emotion and that adrenaline and get down to throwing strikes. Two two. Another three ball count. He's about to uncork his 40th pitch. And he's got nobody out in the second inning. And hit gently in the air into the crowd. Nice catch made. He 
He was ready. Ooh, one handed and kept nice. the beer. Oh, nice. Did not spill a drop. Saved that kid in the yellow jersey, too. Put a star on that one. She's she's super impressed that he didn't drop the beer either. <laughs> so am I. No, that was a security guy that caught it, wasn't it? No, I think it's him right there. Oh, there he is. SJP Hockey. Nice. Where's that? Three St. Two. John's prep. Ooh, fastball in there. 96 to catch him looking. He struck him out. First one tonight for Bale. Yeah, great pitch by Bayo. He finally found the strike zone. Just said, I'm throwing it right down the middle. <laughs> Low fastball. Hit it if you can. That's sometimes what you got to do. Can't be afraid of contact. Will Benson now, left fielder, hitting 0 7 4. I could not be more impressed than I am with that gentleman. Think of all the things he did there. One handed catch, yep. saved somebody's life, didn't spill a single drop. And he acted like, well, I do this every day. <laughs> That's as good as it gets right there. He didn't let the game speed up on him. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Slow down. That whole section's in awe. There's a lot of crazy stuff that happens over in Whoa. that section. There is, yeah. I mean, you get a pizza thrown at you. You just, you just <laughs> might. I mean, <laughs> it's a great section to be in right there. That was All the, the fans go in that section. Something good always happens. Line in the right center down for a base hit. Benson is on. They have their second hit of the night. Did you ever have a piece of thrown at you? I wish. I mean, not at a ball game. I mean, I, I'm dying for somebody to throw a pizza at me one time. Yeah, Benson, that was, a, that was a big guy right here. Look at this. That was a good piece of hitting right there. That was yeah. a change up off the plate. Stayed with it a little bit. Was able to pull it into. Right center. Yeah, when you muscle up on that, you're going to roll over that pitch to every time. First base, second base, but just that little click and that staying through it. Woo. This is always something that you just, you know, when you watch Bayo and he has these starts like this, it's just he misfires a lot. Like it, it's not like he's he's close. Like it, it has to be a mechanical thing, right? Wink? It, it definitely is a mechanical thing. I've always said that you, you make the adjustments on the fly, and sometimes that's hard for a young pitcher. To know what his checkpoints are to make the adjustments when you're in the middle of an inning. Benson was dancing over there, back in. Looked like a penguin over there in Happy Feet. To me, I just think he's flying open and his arm is dropping down too low, and it's you become more of a merry-go-round versus a, a a Ferris wheel. Yeah, same thing in hitting. You don't want that. Fairchild, a 250 average with one home run. Bale continues to fall behind ball one ball two. So when a pitching coach comes out there what are they, they, they going to say to you wake like is it just one little tidbit they give you. Yeah I mean stay back on the rubber longer get your arm up a little bit higher one direction towards home plate not falling off to his left which. Runner takes off and it's a foul ball. So Benson will be sent back to first. Because I'm sure as a hitter. When your mechanics are a little bit off and you're opening up, that allows you to see the ball a lot faster and make the judgment whether it's going to be a strike, a fastball. You can see the pitch a lot better. Probably easier to hit. Yeah, I mean the the great the great reference you made was the merry-go-round. The merry-go-round is is a bad thing with a hitter too. You don't want to have that where you're turning and burning all the time and flying open too soon. I mean, it's no different than the feeling. It's it's funny how there's so many mechanics that go into all the different positions and hitting that are relatable. And when you go bad, you're kind of doing those same movement patterns. Yeah, I always wrote down my checkpoints, you know, like be a Ferris wheel instead of a merry go get arm needs to be in this certain spot. It's going again. Long set. Runner holds this time. Into right field, base hit. Back to back singles. Benson will keep on churning. Long strides. He is safely into third. And then they're on the corners here with only one out in second inning for Cincinnati. You know, those two hits right there were pretty good pitches. They're just elevated just enough, or that was actually where well, that was good. I'm talking about the changeup that got hit the first one, but that was a pretty good piece of hit, and that was a really good pitch down and away. Just went down and got it. Flipped it into right field. 
Yeah, you can't do any better than that. When you get a 93 mile per hour fastball off the plate like that, that's all you can really do with it. Top of the order and Freed a low for one. He is grounded out to the shortstop. Red Sox will take a ground ball to short right now. One down, first and third. Friedel, an excellent bunter, too, leads the big leagues with five bunt singles. No score, but Cincinnati with a threat for the second consecutive inning against Bale. That'll be a strike. These guys like to run a lot. They're not. They're not afraid to. I was reading there was a stat. They scored from second base 50 times on base hits out of 51. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, you go up and down their lineup. They got a lot of speed. I mean, they got sprint speeds that are in the 28s, the 29s. I mean, they're athletic, and they're going to have to do it. They're, like you said, they're not going to drive the ball out of out of the yard a lot. Maybe in Cincinnati a little bit more with the short porch, but got to manufacture runs by getting on base and just playing that small ball. One one. Bounding ball. Valdez to Kike. One on the first and safe. And a run scores. Benson in from third. Red Sox unable to turn the double play, which would have gotten them out of the inning. And they will not challenge. One to nothing. Take another look at this. Just a little bit of hesitation getting out of his glove, but yeah, he's definitely safe. Right? Yeah, that mean it's that's the speed right there. Yeah. I mean, that is flying down the line. Brings up Matt McLean, one for one, with a single to right in his first at bat, hitting 392. Fouls that one away at home play. Not a big guy, he's about 5'8. Yeah, that's just, that's the beauty of baseball too. It's funny. I didn't watch my, watch my kids in a travel ball tournament like type thing. Very young, not really that serious of a travel ball, but parents worried that their kids aren't going to grow. And it's like this game is great because you could be five. You know, you look at Jose Altuve and how little he is to somebody like Aaron Judge and how big he is. It works. You, I mean, you don't have to be big in this game. Bell out to check on his center fielder Friedel. This could be tough here too if they have to remove him because they already lost one player before the game started. Yeah, they lost Spencer Steer with a sore knee, who is the third base. This is after the ground out. Did he just roll his ankle? Trainer out there. Look like he took an awkward step here. Right. Yeah. Look, something happened before. Yeah. Yeah. He was grimacing when he got to the bag. Usually, what happens is it's when you hit the base and you're running really hard into that base. It's not. It's not forgiving in a lot of ways, and it doesn't look like there's anything major, but you get some kind of like jolt in your ankle. For Bayo, a sluggish start. 54 pitches, 30 strikes. Walk two in the first inning and to allow three singles. Yeah, to me, he's just been a little bit off mechanically. He's not throwing enough strikes right now, and they're not really swinging until they have to. Two down. Run a hold. I was wondering if either, either one of you guys going to bring it up, but I, I drive into Boston every day from New Hampshire, take the Starro connector, I go right by the garden. <laughs> and all I saw was the giant video billboard advertising Lionel Richie tickets. <laughs> and my heart sank again after watching last night. That's filed back upstairs. Yeah, me too. Oh. 
painful. I'll tell you what. You can feel that energy of that Celtics loss in tonight's game too. The lack thereof. Yeah. yeah. There's not a lot of energy you can do. It's that they say. It carries hangover. over from sport to sport. That's for sure. It's just been tough. The winter sports have had two tough losses. Mm. Yeah, you're right. It does carry over in Boston. There's no doubt about it. This guy is going to be a good player. I mean, he is a scrappy hitter. McLean singled his first at bat to run his hitting streak to eight in a row. It's only been in the big leagues a couple of weeks, and he's going to take that one in there, change up for strike three. One run does score, one nothing Cincinnati. Masu Yoshida to lead it off. Masu is one guy who was pretty consistent on the road trip. He was kind of on an island. He's been consistent. I mean, ever since he started opening up that, you know, that that front foot, getting a little ground, get, clearing up some space. He was coming across his body, getting around the ball and chopping into the ground. He's been pretty consistent from that day on, and it's been pretty impressive for, you know, he's an older rookie. But coming to the United States and playing here, it's, it's a cultural change. It's a new league, new pitchers. He's adapted well. 303, six home runs. And one thing about Lively, too, if you're watching it from home, you're saying, wow, 90 to 91, what the heck? He's, he's got great extension, which means he is getting out there about 6.8 6 feet on his release. So that ball's getting in a little hotter than, you know, than it's reading on the gun. Walking Massa here, and the Red Sox have the leadoff man on in the second inning. So extension and hiding the ball well, like I said, mechanically, if you open up, you see it faster. Your extension isn't as far, and you get a chance to see it. Is that? Yeah, it's you know, it's those big pitchers. It's uh, you know, remember like the six ten? Who was the? Oh my God, the, the big six ten pitcher that was Randy the, Johnson? Not him, but the um, the one that was with the. Mark Hendrickson. Oh yeah. yeah. Remember, like he didn't throw hard, but he could get out there. I mean, Randy Johnson threw hard, and he got that extension on. Right. Him. So it's just that release point is out there, and that's where some guys is the ball's getting to you quicker. Randy, when he was done with his windup, he could touch your forehead. Oh, just about. There's there a line is. shot toward the gap. That's going to find some green. Great swing there by Duran, all the way to third base. Yoshida will stop, and it's a double for Duran. And maybe just getting back to Fenway's what the doctor ordered. Alex Cora, he, I mean, he was spot on because now you can breathe a little bit. You're not trying to worry about if I drive this ball out, get to change up, and that is what you want to do with it. Stay behind it, drive it to left center field. And I'll tell you, this park is great because you can set your sights better. You can tunnel your vision and say, okay, this righty, he's not going to beat me. I'm just going to utilize that wall. So Red Sox with men at second and third right away. In the second inning, it costs the batter. Runner's going to hold a third on a ground ball, and everyone stays right where they are. That one hit pretty sharply, but for an out. That was that's a tough one. I thought they may be going on contact, but I think the infield was playing in the middle, right, Uke? Yeah, it was kind of a halfway kind of. It was interesting. It's basically saying, hey, if this ball's hit hard. You have a chance to go home with it. Massa's not a, you know, he doesn't have the wheels over there, but good job for him to hold up because he would have been out. I agree. Brings up Kike Hernandez, 235, four home runs. Reach base in 10 in a row. That will file that one back on the slider. That is Lively's best pitch to strike up pitch. Yeah, he's, he's going to get whiff on that pitch. And he and he will spot it right on that left handed chalk line of the batter's box. It's not a strike but he gets a lot of swings from it. Valdez on deck Yoshida at third Duran at second. And a block. By the catcher. Lively 31 years old he's been a man on the move over the years originally drafted by the Reds traded to the Phillies. Made his major league debut with them, but later designated for assignment. Kansas City claimed him off waivers. 
And he was again cut by them. He'd pitch for Arizona and the minors and then leave for the Korean baseball organization. Yeah, you got to love these stories too. About these players that just love the game and keep going. There's no shame in going to Korea and Japan and going and, you know, trying to go over there, work on some stuff. Hey, you know, we've seen plenty of players that go over there and come back and actually have a lot more success. Journeymen. Never give up. No. Opportunity, that door will open. You better be ready for it. Uh, he pitched for about three years with Samsung there in KBO. Then returned home at the Reds again, made the club, and he's pitched pretty well. The experience is also great when you get to go overseas. I mean, it, you're you're out of your element. You're a little uncomfortable, but in the end, it just makes you grow as a person too. You know that firsthand. Three two coming. He jerked that one outside. And that's going to load up the bases. He walks his second man in the inning. Kike is on. Been getting on base a lot. And we'll send up Valdez. Who had a tough trip. Certainly not alone in that regard. And Manuel 243 overall with three home runs. And the one thing about Lively, he'll he'll throw the ball, but he likes to live at the top of the zone a little bit with the sinker and the four seam. So if he gets you that up there and out and over, try to drive that thing to left center. Bases all jammed up. Red Sox with a goal and opportunity, only one away. One oh went the other way but foul. Be interesting to watch this at bat how they may be pitching him differently. We talked about they didn't pitch Duran any different but sometimes the league catches up to young players because they're not known early on in their careers. Did he hold. Nope, swing and a miss. And I know too. I know Valdez likes to go the other way and he's got some pop going to his pull side but. Yeah, he did go. McGuire on deck. They're loaded. Ooh, that was it. That's the that's the one you want too, because from the right hander that's breaking back into your barrel, just misses this. Just got it got a little too deep. Mm -hmm. He catches that a little more out front. That's off that wall, I think. Fouls that one away. Barely hanging in. You can see him peeking over to the left side. I wonder if he's trying to get a ball to shoot that way because the shortstop's playing a little bit shaded behind the second base here. You'll watch him. He does it. He does it almost every at bat. Does he kind of checks out over on that left side of what he's trying to do, checking where guys are. I don't know if it's habit or he's looking. He struck him out, tied him up. You said not an overpowering fastball, 91, but he got him to go. Yeah, he was throwing about 90, and he was he, he was humping up there, throwing about 94. Wasn't throwing strikes, but this is a good pitch. This is like a cutter almost. It says four seam, but it looks like he got around that a little bit. Just made a good pitch right there, and unfortunately, Valdez went for it. Reese McGuire, 282, no home runs yet, hitting 300 on the nose with runners in scoring position. And they're all filled up. Red Sox trail one nothing. A little late on that swing, 0-2. No one is safe today from foul balls. <laughs> that almost get Dave. <laughs> and luckily hit a little bit in front on the padding. The padding's now out, out in play. They yeah, were talking about balls in dugouts. Will Middlebrooks and I almost got killed in oh. Oh. another nice play. Oh no. There's the bunt that he dropped down on Saturday to bring in a run, and it was a huge play bunting on his own. And the Red Sox would win the game by one run. Yeah, that's a that's a huge bunt right there. Unfortunately you can't do it now with two outs. Sorry for getting excited. A fan made a sick catch. You do get excited about that, sick catches. That was a one-handed catch, and then he flashed the whole entire crowd. <laughs> <laughs> could tell Summer's not here yet with that. I mean, he could do anything. That was a bullet, and he caught it with one hand. It's a good fielding crowd tonight. Yeah. Oh, two and a oh. liner, but that's exactly where they had the shortstop, McLean. Oh, bad luck there, and it is one to nothing, Cincinnati.
now and uh, in a corresponding move the Red Sox recalled Ryan share from Triple A Worcester he made two scoreless appearances with the Red Sox this season and he's up at the perfect time because it's Jewish Heritage Night at Fenway Park as we talked about earlier Sheriff of course one of two Jewish pitchers on the Red Sox alongside Richard Blyer who played catch today for the first time since going on the injured list with left shoulder inflammation on May the 22nd wishing the Kluber family all the best ever growing. Man, that's a good pitch right there. Cincinnati with a one nothing lead. Bayo needs a fast inning. Yes, he does. 62 pitches already. India, the leadoff man in the inning. Yeah, India was going after that sinker in, too. Yep, there it is. I mean, if, if I'm a hitter, right, and, and, you, and you throw that sinker in, I fouled off the first one, you better throw that thing back in there again because I'm going to do this again to myself. 100%. <laughs> that hurts. I do it. He's got to throw it again right here. Yeah, I mean, I'd go a little, I'll, yeah, I like the elevation on it too. Jam him. Kike charging in, sets him down, one away in the third. Win big with the Red Sox Foundation 50 50 raffle. Fans over 18 years old in Massachusetts can buy raffle tickets at redsox.com slash 50 50. Now through the sixth inning of today's game for the chance to win half of the net jackpot. See official rules for full details. Jake Fraley, the designated hitter, took a walk in the first inning. They loaded the bases, didn't score. Got a couple of hits in the second inning and did. By the way, congratulations to the five New England college teams who've made the NCAA tournament. Yeah. It's announced yesterday that UConn, again, great program there, Northeastern Maine, Central Connecticut State, and Boston College, all part of the field of 64. The tournament kicks off on Friday with the regional round. All five New England schools are on the road. Boston College got robbed. Shout out to my one of my closest friends, Mike Gambino, the head coach. They got robbed. They should have hosted a regional. They should. But now they get to go down there and take it to Alabama. Stevenson took a walk in the first inning. Easy now on that take it to Alabama stuff. We we've got a boy who went through Alabama. My son Mike. He's all Crimson Tide. Well, it's unfortunate this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Sharply hit. Kike from the grass has a long throw. Off target. Just didn't get it there. And Stevenson's going to be safe at first. Looks like he had plenty of time. Yeah, sometimes when you take a little bit too much, right, the throw will get a little wild. I'm a big believer, like he made that play that Wake was talking about earlier. You get rid of it quick, that slide. Yep. He yeah. knows it. Frustrating it. Sometimes when you just hold it a little too long, that ball can sail on you. E6 brings up Steer. It's almost like he had his body still turned away from the bag. Yeah, one thing too, though, with on that throw as a first baseman, though, it was a little bit up, but that's where you have to even go for that tag. You got to practice that where you're catching in the air and trying to tag the runner. Kike charged with his 10th error. He had committed just one in his previous 20 games. Two out, one on. That's strike on the inside. I'll tell you what, if he's going to give him that pitch inside like that, just keep attacking that sinker in. I was just thinking the same thing. You get that much off in the plate. I'm going back. Oh, yeah. Right? And as a hitter, you're just frustrated because you can't get to that. He's not going back in there, though. It's a missed location. <laughs> Thankfully. You, you were dying to get one up here in the booth. That's coming in hot. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. That was coming in hot. I got up there just to save everything in front of us. Man, if one comes up here, I, I'm not going to see it. I'm, I'm going to leave you. To, <laughs> I, I'm, you need to come save me. You. It's all, all up right. to the gold glover over here. That one smoked in the left center field. Another base hit. 
Stevenson rounding on his way into third. He'll get there. Throw comes into second behind him. And Bayo just can't have an easy inning. First and third with two down. Good pitch here. Uh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> <Up>. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> That's middle, middle. <laughs> Trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. I just love how you made that correction so quick, too. I love it. Well, I'm trying to watch it down there and on the screen <laughs> at the same time, and I get, I'm getting confused. It's, it's so my hard. first day back in the booth. Sorry, guys. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> Here's Newman. <laughs> Hello, Newman. Struck out looking in the second. That is the hard part of being up here, right? You know, it's trying to balance of trying to see the good pitches and trying to look down I want to watch the game but if we're so high up I got to look at the monitor so much to see where the pitches are I wasn't paying attention the see hard. everybody thinks it's really easy no it's and it's a delay like yeah. a two second delay right I don't know I hear it before I see it and it used to be so great without the pitch come you knew what pitch was coming yeah when they mm. <laughs> oh yeah it's us here we are. Long way from home plate. Way. 1-1. One, one. Another one shot into left. Yes. And a sliding oh, play a by Yoshida. Catch. Outstanding catch. He saves at least one. His best defensive play of the season it remains one to nothing. It's one to nothing Cincinnati. Last time we saw you, we were on the road. Red Sox obviously back home now. But what did you think? How do you look at the road trip at four and five coming home? A little bit puzzling. You can go glass half empty. You can go glass half full. They won two out of the three series. However, getting swept in the middle hurts, and so it makes it a little bit less uh, a little bit less satisfying for the Red Sox. I think we've seen continued struggles to match on the road offensively. What they've been doing at home, where they've been. The second best team in baseball six runs a game at Fenway about four point three runs a game when they uh, when they leave Fenway which is very middle of the pack so this is a team with a lot of left handed hitters who benefit a lot from having the wall in front of them. I think. So in other words really good to be home. Uh, no doubt. No doubt. The, the, shockingly Fenway Park remains a good environment for the Red Sox to hit it. Yeah a big series not to overlook this one. But a big series coming up against Tampa Bay four games. Including a doubleheader on Saturday. That you know that that has a chance to either really kind of kickstart something or uh, to leave you reeling because uh, those teams can just beat up each other's pitching staffs and get into a bad spot. Tapia making out number one. And that'll bring up Rafi. Yeah, I could agree with you more about that series too. That's that's a devastating series, especially for the people in the booth, right, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> yep. But no, it it really is. It's that make or break, and it was a scheduled doubleheader, which we've never seen, right? It's I mean, been a long, long time. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, if if we don't count the COVID season, uh, yeah, this is this is certainly a rarity. Yeah, and what was the reasoning for it? Does anybody know yet? Uh, Kevin, you got me. Oh yes! I've been, I've stumped, I've been stumped. Yes! One nothing. I finally got it. I finally got. <laughs> I feel like the no score is more lopsided spirit. than that in your in your favor. Nah. I bet you it has to do with the amount of games you have to play against the AL East. Friedel moving over, and Raphael is over two two fast outs here in the third inning. Talk to me about Marcel Meyer, and I remember a couple of years ago. When Alex Cora at spring training was watching him work, just taking ground balls, he was like, he already looks like a big leaguer. That was the thing that was shocking when he was, uh, when the Red Sox drafted him with the number four overall pick in the 2021 draft. Everything looked so fluid. The swing, uh, how he moved around at shortstop was super advanced for a high school kid, which is why he ended up going number four to the Red Sox. They were absolutely thrilled when he was on the board, and they've just promoted him to double-A Portland. Today he, is his first day officially on the Sea Dogs roster. They're in Somerset, New Jersey, playing the Yankees double-A affiliate. He'll probably make his double-A debut tomorrow, but he's the first guy, to, the first Red Sox draftee to reach double-A at age 20 since 
Anthony Rizzo and Casey Kelly back in 2009. So wow. he's wow. moving at a fast pace, and there's a, a great reason for that, based on his skill set as well as uh, as well as his baseball IQ and acumen. He is learning quickly to the point where they were like, "Okay, we need to challenge you. We need to keep you moving up the ladder." That's awesome too. I mean, 20 years old. Hot shot behind the bag. Newman with a long throw. Can you hang with us another half inning? Of course. One, two, three, go to Red Sox here in the third. Inning question, which Reds player was in the same Baseball Hall of Fame induction class with Carl Yastrzemski in 1989? Benson going for three, and he's going to dive in with a triple. First triple of his career, and he's two for two tonight. And that's how the fourth inning gets underway against Bale. Man, he got out of that box, and he was not stopping. That is good base running right there. I mean, he was thinking three right out of the gate. Good job, too, knowing the arm strength of the two guys converging on that ball on Yoshida and Duran, neither of whom is going to be uh, an above average thrower. So, someone who's moving that well is going to get there. Fairchild trying to pick up another run here for Cincinnati. They lead it one to nothing. He singled in the second inning. Now on Thursday, we're going to be out in the green monster seats for our broadcast. Of course, the monster seats changing the whole Fenway experience for many people when they were installed in 2003. Have you ever watched a game out there? I have never watched a full game from out there. I've, I've caught bits and pieces of them, but uh, it's which is an extraordinary vantage point. And again, for those of us who have, who were coming here before 2003, unfathomable. Runner will be held at third, and Kike up and gunning to cut down Fairchild one away. It, it truly was transformative just kind of a, a light bulb going off and Tim can certainly attest to this you oh, know yeah. that year over year change where it's like wait a second you really can put seats up there. Yeah it was interesting you know it, I talk about that ladder that's you know, a lot of people don't know why that ladder is on the wall and that was because it used to be a net and that's where they got the batting practice balls was in the net but the fact that they came in and built seats on top of that wall it really change the whole dynamic of this ballpark it's it's, it's a special place to, to watch a game from it's a different view I've been up there a bunch of times uh, never really watched a full game like you Alex but um, it's a pretty cool perspective and you're right about it changing the experience of the ballpark because up to that point we kind of looked at Fenway as being more or less fixed right like yeah. it was something it was a it was a baseball shrine but one that was relatively unchanging and then all of a sudden you start to see major changes uh, to the design of the park and the feel of the park that aesthetically fit in very well and uh, obviously those changes haven't stopped. It's going to be a first for me because when I was a kid growing up my dad took me to the games. The view I have right now in the booth is essentially what I had every time I went to Fenway. No kidding. Right behind a post. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like right here this is exactly what I had. As a nine and a ten year old, my brother lives it right there. <laughs> down, it's down there, you know, right in the, in the grandstand. The poles are a little bigger down there than they, <laughs> they are up here. Yes. I had that I had that seat in 2003 against the A's. I, I got uh, with Mike Gambino from Boston College. Yeah. I got tickets. <laughs> they, the Red Sox gave me tickets, so I was the minor leagues. I was like, man, I'm not a prospect. <laughs> <laughs> right by I know where I rank. I was like, man, I don't think I'm going to have a career here. Long. The, the so three, the work on constructing those monster seats and filed at home play. Runner at third with the infield in, one down and one to nothing, Cincinnati. I think, Wake, you'll remember this game. That's when Trot walked it off. Yeah, I remember that. That was a wild game. That, uh, that was, I believe, when uh, when members of the Red Sox stood along the first baseline uh, with Lily uh, in tape on the back of their uh, <laughs> uh, the back of their jackets uh, to get the crowd working against the A's starter. I'll tell you the aftermath of that too. Down the street, that was the wildest thing for me. I'd never you know played in this ballpark, and all of a sudden. People were running on top of taxi cabs. <laughs> and I was like, wow, Red Sox fans are on a whole nother level. Oh, yeah. 2-2 mm -hmm. is badly there. They're talking about the wall, Larry Lucchino's was the, the guy, but it was his idea to, 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 do, to do that. You know, he when they when that whole team came in, their vision 
to do things to this ballpark to change it because they were obviously they were looking at a new site and they decided to, to keep it here. Ooh, he got him struck him out. Friedel could not contain himself and he goes down swinging. Two down. Yeah to begin with not tearing the place down. Yeah. This could change up right here. Get that check swing huge out right there after getting the six three. Get the strikeouts get the two outs and that is something that Bayo has been desperate for right because the Reds have done a terrific job of either uh, either spoiling change ups or laying off them when they've been out of the zone he's only has I think four swings and misses at this point in 90 pitches but that fourth one was pretty huge. That's yeah, wild at 91 pitches here in the fourth inning. McLean tough out although he struck out looking last time he singled in the first inning. It just proves the point of being able to throw strikes consistently opens up the window to be able to throw your out pitch which is his changeup. Right the fastball has to be in the zone otherwise no one's going to respect the changeup that's diving out of it. One and two good job on McGuire right there to keep that in front of him. If he can get out this one, this would be huge. Benson leading off third, began the inning with a triple. Foul right there. On a change up to stay in there. One ball and two strikes on McLean. India next. Reds with five hits. Red Sox with only one so far. Chopper along first but foul. He is just a pesky pesky hitter. Doesn't He's look like he misses a lot of fastballs. No he is. I mean he is scrappy in there controls the strike zone. Betcha if he throws the same pitch he was supposed to throw up in the zone he'll get a swing and a miss for a strikeout. We'll see if they go that direction again. Nope change up in. That was a fastball, 95. Yeah, I mean, and this is what you love to see from young players the ability to foul off pitches, to try to get to a pitch that you can hit. See if Bayo can just blow this by him here. There we he go. He put him away. Got him with the change. Back to back K's with that man at third. Alex, thanks so much. See you soon. Great seeing you. Home for a week. Yoshida with a walk in the second. Nothing came of that. He'll wrap that to the second baseman. And he gets him one gone. And Duran in next. He ripped a double. The last time, Jose Barrero is the new center fielder. Taking over for Friedel. Duran one for one put a great swing and a line drive double off the wall in the second inning but the Red Sox could not bring him home. That is the only Boston hit to this point against Lively. He's been very efficient. He knows how to change speeds and mix up locations. And like you said you his extension is. Pretty amazing. Just the guards are getting loose in the pen. Pitch count's very high for Bayo early. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen him make the adjustment a little bit. The last, the last inning was his best, for sure. Yeah, getting out of that jam was huge. Yeah, leadoff triple, but he held him. Baltimore out in front of Cleveland seven to one in the fifth inning. Victory for the Orioles they will be thirty five and twenty. How about Tampa they win forty and seventeen. Mm. Wow. Playing the Cubs they have their best starter on the mound too McClanahan he's eight and oh. Forty wins. 
a lot. A third of the way through the season. Do the math. Somebody. Mm. 120. <laughs> <laughs> two two. I don't know if you know this, but as a finance major, 40 times three <laughs> is 120. Has nothing to do with finance. On the other side of the ledger, the Oakland A's are 11 oh, oh, oh. and 45. You had Ouch. to do it. You had to do it. You go there. Every, I think every broadcast has to throw in an Oakland reference. <laughs> two two foul tipped in the mitt, struck him out. Two up, two down. Red Sox season tickets provide families, companies, and fans with the best Fenway Park has to offer. Choose from five unique plans. Visit RedSox.com slash season tickets. Oakland only hosts Atlanta tonight. A little bit later. You just feel horrible for those fans in Oakland. I feel horrible for Mark Kotze because Mark Kotze is a, a really good baseball. Me too. He was hired to do something with that team and they gave him nothing. Unfortunately. You're right, taking it all the way, and now looks like they're taking the franchise to Vegas. The team he signed up to manage, they dismantled. Right. That does right not exist anymore. Them. You're right. Yeah. yeah, as much as the ownership though has been a problem, the city of Oakland did, did not do a lot of justice either. Living out in the Bay Area and reading up on some of the stuff. I mean, they lost two teams. The yeah. Warriors moved across into San yeah. Francisco too, and it's yeah. just I don't know how you rebound from something like that. And they've had such a proud history, you know, up to this point as world champions. A lot of great teams, a lot of great players coming out of Oakland. Ricky Henderson, Reggie Jackson. Yeah, Fight of Blue, who just Fight passed. Fight of Blue, sure. Raleigh Fingers. Eck, of course. Eck. You know, they, they won 20 in a row. Yeah. I mean, that uh, the Bash Brothers and you know, the Carney, that era, like Carney Lansford, you know, Steinbaugh. I mean, those guys were legendary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That team. Tony LaRusso's the, team, Tim. The Bay Series when the earthquake happened back mm -hmm. in 89. Yep. Yeah. I just Waved shocked. at him. I just shocked myself. Well done. <laughs> well done. <laughs> One, two, three. For Bale. But he was erratic tonight. 97 yeah. pitches. In four innings, five hits. He had a hard time throwing strikes early on, and something, you know, you could tell by his emotions that he was, he figured it out late, but by then it was too late. He had 90, 90 how many, 95? 97. 97, that's too many. Yeah, a lot of heavy counts early, walk two in the first inning. A lot of traffic. Mm -hmm. This guy, India, was 0 for 2 off him. Rookie of the year in 2021. 34 doubles. He scored 98. Was hit by 23 pitches. Wow. He gets drilled a lot. Stands on the dish, I guess, huh? Three and one. Garza out of the pen. And he gets three, four, five here for the Reds. Well, I'm going to test. He doesn't get hit because he hit the hair thing. He'll drill that one toward the wall. Massa will have to play it off the green. Played That's going to be a Fenway base hit. Played it perfectly. India that, on with a single. That is not easy to do for a guy that's only been here for a year to be able to get around. Watch this. You you played a little bit of left field too. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> the ability the, the ability to hustle past where he know the ball is going to hit off the wall and catch it on one hop. Yeah, it's harder on the low ones too because you don't know if it's going to rattle and hit, you know, right there. It got above that thing, but if it hits a little lower than that, you don't know which way it's going to go. Right. You, you still don't want to talk about left field. No, that looked really good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Was it that bad, Uke? I don't know, Wade. You pitched one day in Oakland. And I gave Frank Thomas a triple. <laughs> With one foot. You did? Remember, he had like one foot at the end of his career in Oakland, and I ran into the scoreboard in Oakland. Yeah, I don't want, yeah, I'm, I'm done talking about my outfield. <laughs> <laughs> it happens to the best of us, buddy. Oh, man. I still have nightmares. Did, 
the, that was the same series wake I had to ask you. I, th I think Frank hit one, the homer. Do you remember that homer he hit? He, he crushed a homer. Which one? He hit a <laughs> bunch <laughs> off me. He hit one in <laughs> Oakland, and I just remember I, I came in the dugout, and I was like, Am I, do I give a courtesy jog on that one? Because it went like three steps up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how to even, like, be kind to the outfield. That's a slicer away from Duran, who will get to the track up against the wall. India, very good wheels, hitting third. The throw to the plate, and he will score on the double. That makes it two to nothing, Cincinnati. A good piece of hitting here. Tried to throw it, break them all down and then left it out over the plate. When you do that, it usually goes pretty long way. I'll tell you what, this is a lot closer than it looked, too. Yeah. Duran gets it in, and Kike, really good job moving those feet. Almost had a play there. Fraley with the RBI, number 35 for him. And a skull. Stevenson now walk. He's also reached on an error by the shortstop. Two runs on seven hits for Cincinnati. The Red Sox without a run on one hit. So they have, at least to this point, brought the West Coast slump back to Fenway. Stevenson at 249. Foul tipped into the mid. 0 oh and 2. You know, you I wouldn't feel sorry for not turning around for a homer off of Frank Thomas. He did it in three different uniforms off me, so wow. I think every outfielder never turned around either. I don't think you were the only one either, though. <laughs> Probably not. He hit over 500, right? I mean, super impressive. And off the front foot. I know. The big hurt. That's a scary at bat. The big hurt. Oh yeah. my goodness. Because he hits it up the middle. I don't have any chance of defending myself. He was a big, big dude. Change up there, two and two. Played football with Bo ja Bo Jackson? Yeah, at Auburn. At Auburn. And played with him in Chicago, right? Didn't he go to Chicago after he Kansas was, City? yeah, he was in the White Sox for yeah. where he started. Fouled away. Yeah, Stevenson too. I mean, he was out a little bit last year, but this is a player that's it's been a big part of this team for the Reds over the past few years. But pretty impressive in his catching and pretty good hitter too. Got 21 RBIs. Couple of home runs. Got a piece of that one. Yeah. Plenty of guys in their lineup. That even hardcore baseball fans would be hard pressed to identify, of course, with Votto out. Even my friends back in Cincinnati might not know half the team. They have had some really tough sledding of getting fans in the games. Yeah, it's in there for strike three, frozen. Strikes out Stevenson for the first out of the inning. Big strikeout here for Garza. Little cutter, yeah, up in the zone, right on, right on the corner. That's the upper 90 right there. Steers gone, one for two with a single. Two nothing, Cincinnati. Red Sox have really had their way with the Reds over the years. They're 14 and three all time in Cincinnati. Really? Yeah, their best record against any opponent. Does that include the World Series? That does not. That does not, yeah. Just regular season, right? Yeah, we had a good series. We had, I remember we went to them. That was a fun series. We took it to them. Yeah, that was fun. My memory of the 75 World Series was it, it ended on Carlton Fisk's home run. I think that's, that's my memory, too. Kike took a look at third with the runner advancing and goes on to first in time. And Fraley safely into third base with two away. Yeah, that was a risky base running right there from Fraley, but he got the ball behind him. That's the that's the rule. Usually, is if you can get that ground ball to be behind you, 
It's good to advance, but look at it. It's a secondary lead, gets it behind oh. him. Close, Kike makes the good decision to go to first instead of trying to make a bang-bang play at third base. Brings up Newman, trying to go up the middle. It skips right there to Valdez, and in plenty of time, he gets him. They do pick up another run, 2 nothing. the Reds. And Kike leading off, and that'll be Valdez and McGuire. He just called that strike? That was a strike. Oh, uh, I guess. Wow. That'll be looped into center field, down for a base hit. So the Red Sox have the leadoff man on on a hit for the first time. That's how the fifth inning begins. Iconic moments presented by Yingling Traditional Lager, the iconic American lager. I wish that it ended the World Series. October 2175, game six. Carlton Fisk, bottom of the 12th. Famous home run off the foul pole. Red Sox would win it 7 to 6 and send it to a seventh game, which the Reds, of course, won. Valdez 0 for 1 with a strikeout. I was a kid. We were living on the South Shore in Marshfield at the time. I was like 11. And the Cardinals sin of falling asleep before that home run. Now my dad shook me awake and acted like he was like seven years old. He was oh, I bet. dancing. I bet. It's great. Is that one of the oddities of that home run though? It did not win a World Series. Like it, when you when you think about it and you see it and like all the history of it, yeah. and you're like, I know. No. <laughs> oh wait, they, they didn't even win. It didn't won that game, but not the series. Right? Yeah. Isn't it? I yeah. mean, I mean, if I was watching that as a kid, I'd be like, oh, that, they won the World Series that way? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can laugh about it now. At the time, it was a painful World Series loss. Reds had a great team. That one ripped down the line, but foul off the bat of Valdez. Jumped all over it. Yeah, don't worry. I heard about that, that team, the Big Red Machine, my whole entire life. And then finally in 1990, mm -hmm. got to celebrate the Reds' victory against the A's, as yeah. we were talking about before. Yeah. But, you yeah. That was the, the, the three closers. Yeah, the nasty boys. Nasty boys. Yes. That's right. Miss Dorm, got Charlton, Randy Myers, and Rob Dibble. Oh, Rob Dibble. I, I have no idea where Jemai is in the ball, but Jemai, where are you, my friend? I am where you guys will be on Thursday because, as you guys mentioned, we're celebrating the Green Monster seats. 20 years of that, we'll call, you guys will call the game high above the field here from baseball's iconic seats, and I'm doing a little. Uh, what do you call it? A little pre-broadcast scout for you, Dave. Thank you. A little recon. Reconnaissance. And uh, I got to tell you, though, on Thursday, it's going to be much hotter. I think the high is 87 degrees, about be about 10 degrees cooler by first pitch. So plan accordingly. And uh, it's a little cozy here. So you guys might be really close. <laughs> if you're using these seats a little hard as well, you might want to bring that cushion that you always pack around every time you go to ballparks, Dave. I, uh, I certainly will. What's the menu above you, Jemiah, at that stand? Oh, yeah. Let me let me find out, actually. Yeah, we got, I'm, I'm that's all we those, care about. Those hot dogs and, and, the, and those brews for you guys. But yes. you have to be able to enjoy those post game, though. You don't want to crack those open during the telecast unless you want things to get interesting. No, no. It's apple juice. It's not beer. FCC. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. We've had our issues this year. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, we have. <laughs> Some sausage Sausages. up there. Sausages. Definitely some brews oh, up there. Oh, and I mm. think we're going to enjoy it up there. So, Yuke, what's better? Sausages, Fenway Franks and sausages here from the sausage guys out, out front. Oh, yeah. Or Skyline Chili from Cincinnati. Oh, that's not like, that. Yeah, Skyline Chili. Come on. Yeah. No. Hands down. No. Did you ask me a question and you told me no? <laughs> is this how this works around here? Your answer is incorrect. <laughs> I'll give you your answer. <laughs> but I'm with you, Wake, because you know, I, that's what I did as a kid when I would, you know, yeah, I walk up it. to Fenway. That's what you would smell. Oh, yeah. I sausage. And I still love to leave the ballpark anywhere. every night. You know. Anywhere around the ballpark. Anywhere. You can smell yeah, the sausages. Every ballpark has sausages and hot dogs. They don't have Skyline. Yeah, that, well, Skyline's pretty, pretty special. Skyline is good. I got to admit it. But I will crush a sausage on Thursday. <laughs> or two. We're going to miss here by McGuire. He's down hacking. And back-to-back -back strikeouts by Lively. He's been tough. 
And the Red Sox continue to have difficulty in the batter's box. Yeah, this guy really knows how to pitch. He's just he's not down the middle of the plate. You know his fastball has had such deception on it. It almost looks like it rises. You yeah. you can attest to that because I don't know the, the lingo on the whole <laughs> analytic stuff. Yeah the carry. I got a little carry go. on it. Carry with a little rise. What appears to be a rise right. 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 Yeah, That's carry. an optical illusion. Well, correct. You, you still can say life. It still has life on okay. it. But carry. Carry your life. Is it horizontal and vertical movement. That's the vertical. That's the vertical movement. Young loosening in their bullpen. And up top here. On top here, he's gone over two. Man, I'm a dinosaur when it comes to this stuff. I told you, Wake, you cannot get too upset about it because you defied all of the spin and everything. <laughs> you had no spin. So you don't understand it. Go. One sock toward the wall, racing back go. Benson. That's over his head. On the move, Kike, the third, pounding it. Here he comes. Here's the throw to home, and the tag he is out at home. The catcher, Stevenson, held on. On the collision. And that is out number three. KK Hernandez cut down at home plate. Red Sox just having a devil of a time scoring runs and can't do it here at the end of five. Two nothing Cincinnati. This guy Will Benson part of it with a base hit and run scored. He also tripled and was stranded in the fourth inning. And Garza delivers the 1 1. And another hit for Benson. He's 3 for 3 out of the 8 hole. We check out the T Mobile coverage cam that play at home. Yeah, Rival Tapia drives this ball, goes down and gets it to left center field. And Kike is running as hard as he can out the box. He is thinking for the whole way. But this is a great play. Barrero to McClain. And a strike right there. Sometimes you got to tip your catch to defense. Toppy is 500th career hit, by the way. Really? Congratulations. Yeah, and when things are going, you know, rough for an offense, things happen like that. I mean, that bang bang play, that ball's a little offline, one way or the other. Who knows? Yeah, they gave him a double on the play, by the way. The exchange by the shortstop was the incredible part. That's what made the whole play. The exchange and to throw a strike to home plate. Yeah, what a good young player McLean is. Yeah. He's only been in the big league a couple of weeks. And looks like he's going to stick for a long time. Yeah, it's going to be hard to take him out of there. I mean, he plays really good defense and just puts together good at bats. Fairchild's gone one for two with a single. And he'll pop that one into foul ground. Casas giving chase, but off the netting. On game two of this three game series tomorrow evening, 7 10, James Paxton against right hander Luke Weaver. Paxton looking for a bounce back. And then Chris Sale goes on Thursday against Hunter Green. Who regularly goes over 100 miles an hour. Blazing fastball. That's going to skip away and it'll advance the runner. Benson scoots on down to second. On a wild pitch. Not sure if that was a cross up or not. I don't know what uh, what happened there. Change up there and he comes up empty. Down he goes on strikes. And one gun. Just setting them up, that's all. <laughs> Great pitch. Good change up here. Yeah, right. Like a lot of righties don't like to go right on right, but if you got a good change up like this that dips out and goes into a righty, you're gonna get some swing and misses and Absolutely. some weak ground balls to third base. Barrero batting for the first time since he entered the fray. 222 and one home run. Took over in center field.
Benson at second. And no throw here by Garza. Red Sox are in a stretch over which 17 of 23 are going to be against National League teams. Usually very good news for Boston. Oh. Come on, you got to have that one. Foul back up here. Didn't get into the booth, almost got into the radio booth. Go go gadget arm. Where Joe Castig certainly would have made the play. He's always ready to pounce. Huh, Joe? Come on, Joe. Play. Joe's made a few. One and two. How can he not? Known to have great hands. Been here a long time. <laughs> long time. Yeah, sure has. <laughs> Only 40 plus years. Oh yeah, just just 40 plus. I, I caught one at Old Riverfront, which had big windows. Right. And I caught it one-handed while broadcasting the inning, next did to it, Don Sutton. Did it hurt? Yeah, it hurt, and I didn't show it. Did You'll you drop be, your beer? Be <laughs> 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 did drop my beer. It went everywhere. It was, uh, it was unfortunate. A nice cold Judy Very pole. sad moment. <laughs> well, back then you might have been able to. Back then, yeah. So I, I go downstairs. I'm catching the bus. You have to walk through the clubhouse. I was broadcasting the Braves at the time, and I walked right past Mike Stanton. Remember Mike yeah. Stanton? Oh, yeah. Mike. Mike's in a towel. He's walking he past me. He played with us here. He played here. He didn't even look at me, and he just says to me, you're not that good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a classic baseball he, player. He was right. Going to be ball four. He's been on. The, he's been doing MLB radio for a long time, right? I think he has. Yeah. Yes, he has. Been very busy. Had a pretty good career in that. Now a couple of men on here. And Window World of Boston is giving one lucky Massachusetts resident all new replacement windows you can enter. At Nesson.com slash window world giveaway. See official rules online for details. It's a little trouble brewing here. Red Sox are already down two zip into the middle innings. Yeah, one of the tougher parts about a short, you know, outing from Bayo here is putting stress on the bullpen. And it's not as much for this series as much as for the race series, too. I mean, right. it's a tough doubleheader on Saturday, so. You know that that could be costly. You know, ho you know. Hopefully, the next two days you get some good starters that you know get get into deeper innings. Joelly Rodriguez, the lefty, starting to heat up. One down. And here's McLean, their hot hitter, the hottest hitter they have. He's one for three tonight, eight game hitting streak. And batting 377. the edge for a strike. I mentioned the Red Sox all time against the National League have won 297 games and lost 206. Bounder here's Kike and that one right through Valdez and off of the right field a run will score. Benson is in thrown a second's not in time he'll be safe at second and third. And three to nothing Cincinnati. Yeah, Garza gets the the perfect, you know, ground ball to get a 6-3 and just looks like Kike just spiked it a little bit to the left of Valdez there. Let's check this angle. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough play right there. Tough feed. Looked like he just didn't move his feet, didn't open up enough, right? Just kind of went hard at it, didn't open up and get that thing to get up in the air more infield in India the batter two men in scoring position kick has been charged with a pair of errors tonight Red Sox had gone the previous six games without making one look to hold up but did he go yeah he went oh and two Ooh, tell you what, India, he is he is ready to hack. He is not getting cut short of any swings. Only one out. Two. 
Reds three Sox nothing and Cincinnati threatening to add on. Little check swing and a pop up here and a catch will be made by Casas. Spoke too soon. He did get <laughs> he did get short right there twice he did on that one. Holy cow. Two down. That is a tough at bat right there. Here comes the manager. He's got Rodriguez ready to enter. And Joelli about to make an appearance here. We'll take the break as well. Cincinnati with runners at second and third, but now two down, three nothing Reds. More in a moment. The official outing out of hand. It's the buyfornow.com call to the bullpen. Joely Rodriguez to face the lefty Fraley, who did some damage back in the fifth inning with a run scoring double. There are two out, runners at second and third. And three nothing Cincinnati. Bale went short, only four innings. Threw a lot of pitches, 97. He was just off, really, from Jump Street tonight. I will give him credit, though. He kept his team in the game. It could have been a lot worse. He kept his team in the game. He only gave up one run over the four innings. 97 pitches. That, that's an incredible gut, you know. Yeah, he did gut it out. He You're right. He gutted it out. Coming off a really good outing in Anaheim. Yeah. Very good. Rodriguez with a 2 1. Man, he is coming out swimming. I mean, this, some of those pitches are even close. 27 foul balls. Yeah, he, he has a lot of foul balls. I mean, you look at each start. Swing and a miss, struck him out. Good work by Joely Rodriguez to get the K. They want this season to go in the right direction. We'll also have highlights from Louisville where Adam Duvall was playing for the Woo Sox, guys. Well, that's great news there. Thank you, TC. And He's getting closer and closer returning from that wrist fracture. And then we'll see what that means. Is he going to be in there every day? Is he going to be an everyday DH? Is he going to go back to the outfield? Big swing and a foul back by Raffi. And a little more on Duvall tonight. 0 for 3, couple of strikeouts. Eligible to come off the 60 day on the 9th of June. That's in uh, New York, right? Yep. Well, it's just good to see him back playing. You don't worry about the stats as much as just getting the reps. It was a weird injury. Yeah. Not this is kind of like just fell on his wrist and it broke. Or fractured. Swing and a miss. Down goes Devers. Raffy's in a funk. Over for three tonight. Remember he hit those two home runs in San Diego to launch the trip and. He did not drive in another run after that on the trip. Yeah, he's just getting a little out of control. You see that opening up big time. I mean, he does a lot of different things, but when he's going bad, it's just unbalanced and just not smooth. It's a lot of forced effort. But that's, a, you know, when most hitters are going bad, that's what's happening. They're muscling up, they're trying to do too much. Sounds like pitching. <laughs> the Saints. Just a turner 0 for 2. I think it's all sports right when, yeah. when you start getting muscular you start trying to get you you're you're wound tight you just can't play well and that's what that's the difference between elite players and, and average players is they stay calm and loose throughout just a, lot. just a matter of time before he goes on a tear oh, but, yeah oh. like he's going to hey, I'm not worried about him at all <laughs> somebody's in trouble down the road yes Turner wraps it to third friendly bounce for Newman. Held the bag for the out. Two up, two down. 
Red Sox just not getting anything going yet. Tomorrow at six, don't miss Red Sox first pitch presented by Rodenheiser Home Services. We will preview the matchup between Luke Weaver and James Paxton. Red Sox best scoring opportunity was in the fifth inning when Kike was thrown out at home plate. And you know, Raphael Devers was due up next. Yeah, I mean, I think you take the chance, right? I mean, that was, I mean, yeah. that was a perfect, you know, relay. I mean, as a manager, you're excited about how good of a relay that was. Base hit to center. Yoshida aboard for the second time. He had walked back in the second inning. Yeah, Mr. Consistent, too, for the Red Sox all year. I mean, Yoshida right here is just, this is a pitch that he would have grounded into the, in, right down in front of home plate and been an easy ground ball. He's made this adjustment. He's gotten to this pitch short and easy to it. Just a good piece of hitting. Well, the manager's wow. going to make a move here. Lively's going to be done here I'm at 88 shocked. pitches. Yeah. Pitch the heck of a game. Alex Young, the left hander, on to face Duran. It's a break for the Red Sox. Where that guy pitched 3 0 Cincinnati. More in a moment. Nothing Cincinnati Red Sox with a base runner. The pitching change presented by Sullivan Tire and Auto Service. We're always here to get you there. This guy Alex Young has been throwing the ball very well. Last seven appearances a 169 ERA. Duran with a wall ball double and strikeout tonight. Yeah, he's got that. He's got to throw 40% changeups and 34% sinkers. And that curveball right there about 22% of the time. So you're gonna see some slop from him. Two away. Looked like he held and he did. Slop. Like yeah, it. I like it. Like Trot Nixon used to say, <laughs> challenge somebody. <laughs> Would he yell that from the dugout? Every time he struck out, like I got out on a change. <laughs> Big cut on the sinker, one and two. This is my favorite. <sighs> favorite. Yeah, sinker's got some good movement on it, too. Good action down and it has a little tail on it as well. To right, Fairchild coming on and will make the catch. He started back, but he recovered. One man left. Get shut out tonight, three nothing. They have just four hits. Cincinnati with eight. Tyler Stevenson has reached on an error, struck out, and taken ball four. Red Sox made a couple of errors, both of those charged to Kike, and he's also been thrown out at home plate. And as the Red Sox were trying to be aggressive there, and he got cut down. That'll be in there for strike. Joelli came on, and he fanned Fraley. To strand a couple of base runners in the sixth inning. Red Sox came in nine and a half games behind Tampa Bay in the division. Tampa Bay and Chicago playing the Cubs, and it's one nothing the Cubs are in the fourth inning. Baltimore on top, 8 3 over Cleveland there in the seventh. And a 3 2. He will walk him. Leadoff man on. Nesson and Blue Moon want to give you the opportunity to watch a game with Jared Carabas. For more information, Visit Nesson.com slash like a pro. And you read that like a pro. Very kind of you, Wake. Nice. Very kind of you. We do a few of them. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> so do you. I have done a few. 
Steer one for three with a base hit. Runner on and nobody out. You know, you don't swing the bat, you don't score runs, you're always going to look flat. Yeah, it's been, you know, the, the big one is this not getting with, you know, the runners in scoring position had that in that one inning at second and third, nobody out, couldn't push it across. And so that's the biggest one right now. There's been opportunities, but the, the big thing is the fact that this game is 3 nothing is amazing right now because the Reds have left a ton of runners on base. Chop toward the hole through for a base hit. The steer with a single that'll put him on at first and second. You're right, they've had a ton of traffic. They left about 10 guys on tonight. Especially in the first, what, three innings? Four innings. Yeah, a left them lo loaded in the first inning, yeah. yeah. Now, here comes Newman. Strike out a liner on a nice play by Yoshida in left field. Masa really made a sprawling catch on it. It's also grounded out to second. And through for strike one. They've been right on the verge. They're really making this too big a lead a couple of times. Red Sox have stopped them from really blowing it open. Where's that? Well, they call that a ball, huh? Yeah. Wow. It's been an interesting strike zone. Gotta have that tonight. That's got a lot of the box. Look at that. It did. Nobody out two on. Benson on deck. He has been all sorts of trouble tonight with three hits, three for three, including a triple. And he scored two times. Need a double play here. Yeah, you got to get out of this jam and just get those bats going. I mean, they've been the comeback kids for most of the year. I know the bats have been cold, but. Magic happens at Fenway Park. I want to see those lights change. Have you got them yet? While broadcasting wake? Yeah. I think my first night in. There you go. <laughs> Saw it. Three two. Stevenson at second steer on at first. Made contact to hang in there. Came up to strike him, but he's in the box. Yeah, Reese, Reese is pointing at it. Say so he stepped over the line when he got hit, but it's a hard one to challenge. Can you even challenge that? It's a good question. I do not believe you can. I don't think you can, right? Yeah. It's always weird how there's different rules that you can't mm -hmm. challenge something like that. It's the umpire. And this one's going to be downstairs, ball four. So that'll load him up. And once again, they keep on pressing and pressing. They have not been able to blow it open yet. But there's nobody out, and they're all filled up. Bush out to the hill. Benson will be the hitter. He singled and scored in the second inning, tripled in the fourth, singled and scored again in the sixth inning. Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center provides first aid and emergency care at Fenway throughout the season. BIDMC is the official hospital of the Boston Red Sox. The Red Sox are in a lot of trouble right here. As we start to move toward the later innings and already down three nothing. You're facing the hottest hitter in their lineup right now too. Yeah, this is the one where you're hoping for for tonight. Yeah. You're, you're hoping for a little ground ball right back to, yeah. to the pitcher to get something one, going. One, two, three, double play. Or a triple play would be nice. Ooh. I like the way you think. I haven't seen one of those in a while. 
I haven't seen one in person for like 20 years. Really? Yeah. Long time. And a strike on the sinker, one and one. Yeah, the walks have been a problem for Joey. Yeah. I mean, he, he, you got to come in there and you get, I mean, the last one hurt. It was 0 02 count, too. Yeah, when you're not throwing 95. Liner and oh, he hooked it foul. That's also one thing too. When you're, I mean, when you're not throwing hard, of course you got to nibble around the plate, but you can't be. I mean, he's missed big on a lot of pitches. Yeah. Got to use that deception and, and move it around. But you know, this is it right here, though. Left on left. This is why you're in the game a lot of times. And his role is to get lefties out. Easier said than done. But right here, you need to get that K. They lead all the way around. Stevenson steer and Newman from third to first nobody out and a 2 2 from the veteran and another long count three and two. Fairchild on deck. And he's got to throw a strike here. Bounder coming home with it. Valdez on the money back to first. Close safe. Red Sox could not turn a double play. They do get the man at home. Yeah, that's a big out. You know, didn't get it. Definitely was safe at first, but at first it looked like it was going to be a little too high where Valdez was going to have to jump up. And if you jump up on that play, you got no chance. They're getting the runner at home. You got to go to first. See if they can get the double play now to get out of it. And come in and try to get some runs. That's some unbelievable speed by Benson like, as well. Yeah, he can he, fly. He can fly. He's a tall guy. Yeah, he's an athlete. He's 6'4, 6'5. Yeah. Fairchild is one for three. Base is reloaded with one out. Yeah, what you're seeing from the infield too in this situation, you're not seeing just double play depth. It's kind of like a it's it's kind of a secondary, right? You're you're playing a little bit back, so you if it's hit hard to the middle of the infield, you have that ability to turn it up. Kike's kind of getting back a little bit, but also if it's hit a little softer, you can come home with it. Two balls, one strike. Yeah, you got the corners in, right? Because anything hit to them, they're coming right. for, right? Even, but a ball like this, the, the tricky one here too. If you're a third baseman like Raffi, if it gets hit hard to your left, you're going two. In tight, three and one. He's having difficulty throwing strikes here. Walk two in the inning. Is that why you see the right side of the infield shifted a little bit so Valdez can be close to second? Yep. And that is going to be ball four and force in the run. Steer across home plate to make it four to nothing. As he walks Fairchild. That's his third walk in the inning. I don't think I've ever seen that either. Where Fairchild hasn't even left the box and the runner's trying to get to touch home. Top of the order in Barrero. He took a walk in the sixth inning, and that gets away. Run is going to hold it third. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's just the pitch count. Yeah, I mean, he's told this is his 35th pitch. Maybe he's not used to, you know, maybe just losing some gas here. But he's missed big on a lot of pitches. That's a change up there misfired. It didn't look like it had a lot for a change up. It didn't look like it had a lot of spin. Is that a, uh, a split change? Yeah, that one's hard to tell. I mean, it just looked like you just totally missed it. The sheriff begins to warm in the pen. Yeah, it's 35 pitches now for Rodriguez. He's only thrown 15 strikes. That is not a good ratio. He's at 43% strikes right now. 
Only one out. Base is reloaded. There's a drive. High and deep headed for the monster seats. And that one off the light tower for a grand slam. Barrero sitting on that. And he killed it. The grand slam for Jose Barrero, who did not start this game. He's only been up to bat a couple of times. And he makes it eight to nothing. Yeah, that's a tough one right there. I mean, Joey doesn't have enough, you know, the velo there for guys not to be waiting and sitting dead red. And Barrero was waiting and he capitalized on that. That's an absolute bomb. And it will be the last pitch that Joely Rodriguez throws tonight. Disastrous outing. Three walks, a grand slam, and eight to nothing. So the Red Sox have to go back to the bullpen here. Down eight. We'll take the break and return to Fenway with more in just a moment. Who was just promoted from Triple A Worcester this afternoon. And then takes over with the bases now empty. And one man out. Here's McLean. Who has got one for four in the ball game. Eight runs on ten hits. Walks playing a big role as well for Cincinnati. Not what the Red Sox had in mind coming back after the West Coast swing on which they went four and five and there's no shame in that going on the West Coast to those places San Diego Anaheim and then Arizona Arizona's a good ball club and going four and five and nine but you figure coming home is going to resuscitate the offense especially with the weather warming up that one line and a nice play by Rafi as he goes down to make it. On a third base line, pretty much, and that is uh, number two. Yeah, good play there by Raffi. Clayton just hooks this ball. But I'll tell you what, I mean, going back to this game in general, I mean, you look at it and evaluate it. I mean, the Reds had so many opportunities to be 8 nothing way before the seventh inning. Mm -hmm. They finally capitalized on that grand slam, but. You know the Red Sox you know even with offensive woes the pitching today has just not been where it needs to be. Some of this could be a hangover from a West Coast trip back you get the off day on Monday. It's a holiday. It's just you know. That's the people don't understand coming back from the West Coast can really screw your uh, sleeping habits and all that stuff up for a couple days. I'm not making excuses for it but. India's got one for four a single and a run. Well, whatever is up with the Red Sox, particularly offensively, and as Uke rightly points out, tonight pitching's a giant problem. Crews getting ready in their bullpen. But whatever's happened with the bats, it's really happened team wide. Maybe with the exception of Yoshida, which is just so rare to see. Swing and a miss down, he goes strike three. And they're gonna pick up five more, eight nothing Cincinnati. He mixes it up. He beat the Cubs on Friday 9 0. He came on to pitch a perfect ninth. Combined on a shutout with Hunter Green and Eduardo Salazar. We will see Hunter Green, a flamethrower in this series. He will pitch the last game on Thursday against Chris Sale. Should be an outstanding pitcher's duel. Yes, it will. Both guys throw really hard. Kike with a walk and a single. And Manuel Valdez will follow him. Look to hold up a strike anyway. 
I'll tell you, these are some tough at bats too. Late in the game, you're down eight nothing, but these are important at bats. I mean, you got a three game series. You got to grind it out, take it into the next game, try to you know come back in this one, but not looking too good right now. Kike strikes out, two gone. Nasty slider here. Called the the one before that a strike and kind of forced Kike to swing at that one, but that's that was a, a lot nastier slider there. And part of what you're talking about, Yuke, is you may see the guy again. Yeah. I don't know if that was a you know what, honestly? The, the velo of that one, I think that might have been his split. Oh, really? That's it, how nasty broke, that split is. It broke that far to Yeah, the so his split finger, yeah, it has like a little cut action to it. So if you see that V, yeah, I mean, I thought it was a slider too, Wake, right away, but then I, then I saw the velo and it was 81. Huh. That's his split. Yep, hey, there right. it is. Look at this. That thing just takes wow. Mm. That's like a knuckleball almost. Yeah. Oh, two a little roller. How about again. this one? Newman's going to hold on to that. No throw. It'll be a base hit for Valdez. He'll take it. He's been scuffling with the bat. He went three for 20 on the road trip. One for three now tonight. Yeah, you take the. He went back to that split and watch it again. It almost has that slider look to it. Right off the end of the bat. What a beautiful thing. And these are the ball. Hey, these are the hits too that can get you back on track. Oh, it's yeah. not the swing you wanted. It was a nasty split. But you, you know, getting that knock is a huge deal mentally. But you're standing at first base, right? Swinging a drive by McGuire. High up there, headed for the wall. On his way to third, here comes Valdez. He will score. And that'll be a double for McGuire. And the Red Sox break up the shutout bid. It is eight to one. Here we go. Yeah, I mean, that's what we were talking about. These at bats are big. Hey, you never know what can happen. But hey, you're grinding it out. You're trying to get back into feeling good. Got that fastball right where you want it. Middle, middle. Does a good job of going the other way with it to the part where <laughs> you can, I'll tell you any other ballpark that's an out. Instead an RBI double his 10th RBI of the season brings up Tapia. Keep the line moving let's go. Oh high deep drive center field. Barrero back 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 and it's off the wall a run is in. Tapia hits second. He wants third and he will dive in safe. And some life for the Red Sox here in the seventh inning. That makes it eight to two. I'll tell you what, Tapia, man, this guy. He's put together some good at bats and played well for the Sox and the roles that he's been put in. Great pitch hitter, but when he gets his chance of starting, he capitalizes and this ball is crushed. Yes, sir. Unfortunately, the wind's blowing a little bit of right. It's like almost like center field to left, so it probably knocked it down a little bit. But great hustle to get into that triple there. He has a double as well tonight. This one right off the bleacher bar screen. And his first triple. He got his 500th career hit tonight, too. And now three base hit. Man at third, two down for Raphael. He's trying to bust out. 0 for 3 tonight. Oh, wouldn't this be something? Listen to him. When you tear into one here, you hit it about 450. This place will. Go electric. You can say you're back in the game. With time, here's the 1 0. Little bloop shot. That'll find a home in right center. That'll drive in a run. Tapio will score to make it 8 to 3. Raffi with his 45th RBI. Unusual for him, and then it was not a lightning strike of a line drive, but he'll take it. Yeah, just got the slider in on the hands. And Rafi's just too strong and gets it over the head of India for the RBI knock. And just like that one, too. A lot of
lot of great hitting coaches will tell you, hey, man, you're out in front, get jammed a little bit, hit a little, you know, you're not trying to hit bleeders, but get jammed, force it up the middle of the field. 500th RBI. Yeah, they threw the baseball back in for Raphael Devers. 500 hits and 500 doubles. Or, I'm sorry. 500 RBI. <laughs> RBIs. <laughs> So it brings up Justin Turner who's gone 0 for 3 a couple of ground outs and a fly out two down. And the crowd has come to life. In for a strike. Keep the line moving boys. That's why these at bats are big. They're you huge. You just keep you keep grinding out at bats because you just never know what can happen. That splitter is it's nasty. Nasty. I don't even know how he does that. It's more of a it's more of a fork ball than a splitter. Because most of the time a splitter is going to go straight down or it's going to go to your arm side a lot of times. Right. Buried that one. It almost plays like a curveball. Right because he throws the 88 mile per hour slider that's tighter and then that one just I mean it's wild. Buck Farmer, the right hander, up in their pen. Two down, a one two to JT. That's off the glove. Raffi's going to stay put. Another split. A lot of movement on that pitch. Red Sox trying to make a game of it here in the seventh inning. They have scored three times, first three runs of the ball game. Two, and two. Fly into right field. Fairchild's backing up with plenty of space out there, and he'll make the catch. Red Sox do score three times. Eight three Cincinnati. been up and a lot better hitting 96 97 consistently of course said it's what we want he's going five he's not going five or six anymore he's going in the sprint hopefully this is a step for something great for him he says all right you might thank you very much at three really good innings the other day for Nick Pavetta a little chopper sheriff on the hill the backside will throw and cut down Fraley speaking of the bullpen an absolute must to keep Cincinnati exactly where they are if the Red Sox are really going to climb back in it down eight to three. Good PFP right there. Yeah. So the man out that'll bring up Tyler Stevenson the Reds catcher. He's drawn a couple of walks in the game. Walks were instrumental and the Reds getting five in the seventh inning. Three walks, couple of them scored. Grand slam in that inning by Barrero. Well, the Red Sox came back with three of their own in the bottom of the inning. Socked in the center. Durango turned around. He's at the track and he can't make the play. That's over him and it rolls to the deeper part of the ballpark. Stevenson into third base and he will stop there. Yeah, the way it came off the bat, as you can see, it kind of hooked it and then it kind of faded wow. back. That was some weird action off the bat right there. The wind must be really swirling out there some, for some reason. That ball took a left turn and then a right turn. They'll call it a triple. Infield in. When he originally hit it, I thought he, it was going to hook left, going more to the 379. And, J and Jerry Duran took the right route back and then all of a sudden just faded back to the right. Steers had a good night with a couple of hits and has scored a run. So Stevenson with a three base hit 90 feet away with one gone. And a fly ball into left. Yoshida will size that up. Stevenson will tag. Here he comes. They'll let it come through but they're not going to get him and another run is in. Nine to three Cincinnati on the sack by Steer. So 
So very quickly they turn that play in center field into a run. Okay, just doing the job right there. Got in on them a little bit, but just enough to get it a little too deep for Massa to make the play at home. So two down, nine three Reds. And a base is clean here for Newman. He took one of those important walks in the seventh inning and came in to score in the grand slam. Nine runs, 11 hits for the Reds, three runs, eight hits, two errors for Boston. Baltimore closing in on another win. They lead Cleveland 8 5. They're in the ninth. The Rays and the Cubs are 1 1 in the sixth in Chicago. Here's the 3 0. There we go. Yeah, Rays bats have gone cold. It's only one run in 15 innings. I don't know if they've had that all year. I would bet not. As hot as they were. Sharply hit. Nice backhander there by Casas. He'll tap the bag for the out, but they had another. It's now 9 3 Cincinnati. Yoshida leading it off. He has one of the eight Red Sox hits. New pitcher on here is Buck Farmer. Been a tough one, too. Last 16 games he's pitched. His ERA is a little over 1.3. Yeah, I got the four seam slider and change. The four seamer, it's got a little run to it. It's going to run away from lefties into righties. And that changeup's got good downward vertical. And the slider's just going to take off a little bit into the lefties, away from righties. There's that chain Ooh. right there. That's pretty filthy. Yeah, it's got some good drop on it. I'll tell you, the, the one thing that, you know, the score is 9 to 3, but Red Sox have thrown 192 pitches through eight innings. Tough to win games like that. Oh. That's going to bloop towards center field and drop down for a single. Yoshida keeps getting on base. He's one guy who's been really reliable during his power outage for the Red Sox. And he leads it off here in the eighth inning with a base hit. Yeah, third time on base tonight. Drew the walk in, in the second inning and now two base hits. But look at that right there. Just getting those hands inside of it and just muscling it out there. When you have a good swing path like that, you're going to get a lot of those bleeders to fall in. I used to love when guys say, oh, this guy's lucky. He's not lucky. He's, he knows what he's doing. Staying through the ball well, forcing it out there in the outfield. I hated those hits. <laughs> <laughs> Make a good pitch. Oh, I used to. I'd be walking. I'd be walking on water to first base after those. <laughs> Duran with a double, a strikeout, a flyout tonight. Found the wall in the second with a line drive. Zinc 298. What was worse, those wake or the swinging bunts? The swinging bunts. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The, the excuse me check swing 45 hopper. <laughs> Not many tried to bunt on you, did they? No. Oh, that'd be crazy. Can you imagine? I was like a cat off that mouth. <laughs> Couldn't <laughs> bunt off me. Well, there was that. <laughs> it's also the fact that you could make someone look really, really silly trying to bunt a knuckleball. That's why your friends called you whiskers. <laughs> That was the fun part of it is trying to make somebody look dumb. Yeah, you you did that a lot, a lot. 200 big league wins. Some guys made me look dumb too. 3 1 sharply hit oh. sprawling play India. He'll go to first stole a hit there from Duran Yoshida down to second. Man, tough one right there. That was a great play by India. 
going to his left, getting into that slide, because you got to get up quickly, because the way Durant can get down the line, I thought it was through, and man, just slid it, buried that thing, and got him out. Brings up Tristan Casas, who is hitless tonight, 0 for 3, and he wraps that one right along the line foul. He has been super aggressive tonight. Yeah, I think he's only seen like four pitches tonight, hasn't he? Seems like it, yeah. I mean, I think that's, I think he's swung every first pitch now. Yeah, the 4 3 was on that curveball. And the, yeah, I think he swung every first pitch. 0 oh, 2. Well, sometimes the only way to get out of a slump is go up there swinging. E.K. Hernandez to hit next. Let's see if he throws this changeup right here. Yeah, interesting right there, nine to three. I don't think Moss is going anywhere. Uh, probably not. Maybe just didn't like what he was getting ready to deliver and wanted to reset. Farmers 0 2. That one hit hard. Racing for it, Fairchild. A sinking liner. He makes the catch. Massa forgot. And Massa forgot he's going to be doubled off of second no. base. And how about that? That's the kind of night it has been for the Red Sox. Out number three. He did not realize or forgot how many outs there were, and he is double up. Left to right over the monster seats, where we will be on Thursday night broadcasting the game from the monster seats. Salazar getting ready. I can't wait. That, it's going to be fun. I think we're going to have a blast out there and we're going to have that little section all to ourselves. Ooh. We get to heckle. We get to heckle, yep. <laughs> or get heckled. One <laughs> of the two. Sure, we will. Thank God we have headsets. Wow, he has not called that pitch right there. Uh -huh. That corner. It's like the third time he's missed that that corner. Cut on and missed. He struck him out. Two away. Statcast is powered by Google Cloud. Yeah, and the first career grand slam for Barrero was 106.5 miles per hour exit velocity and traveled 333 feet. First of his career, first grand slam. Three thirty-three. <laughs> I said the same thing. That ball was farther than three thirty-three. Is, is that where it stopped? Because it hit the, it hit the light standard. Oh, maybe that. Home run cut there. On two. Yeah, I was playing that uh, video game with my kids. It was the same thing, like the home run derby, and it was hitting buildings. I was like, no way, that's 380. Like, that building's humongous. <laughs> and my kids were like, Dad, it's 380. <laughs> I'm like, I don't believe you. Here's the 0 2. Don't argue with kids over video games. They know way more than us. I'll tell you, these these video games are amazing too, especially the baseball ones. I mean, they're so realistic. Yeah. Sheriff with his 29th pitch since he entered the fray, and that'll miss up high. Cincinnati right now at 24 and 29. They're playing well coming into Boston, winning four out of five. Shattered bat and a liner over the glove of Kike. And a base hit. So Barrero continues to have a nice night on top of that grand slam. Now he has a single. Yeah, wasn't supposed to play today. Came in for an injury. It comes away with a gr first grand slam, a hit. 
And was it the walk too? Yeah. Yes. Wow. And a broken bat. Went out a champ that bat. Yeah. Look at this. Oh. oh. Good Close. effort there by Kike. Might be a little sore tomorrow after that one and the play at the plate. Yeah. Oh yeah. What think? Yeah, it was a little worrisome at that play at the plate too when he went in there hard because Stevenson's a big boy, about six four. He came down on him pretty hard. Matt McLean has one hit. That was back in the first thing, ran his hitting streak to eight straight. Two down, ninth inning, nine three Cincinnati. And he'll lift that one to center field, very playable for Duran. And that'll do it for Cincinnati. They're up by six. Getting a slider, getting jammed a little bit to score Tapia back in the seventh inning. Those were the nice moments tonight. The rest of them have belonged to Cincinnati as they lead at 9 to 3. They've out hit the Sox 12 9. Salazar will take over, looking to lock this one up for the Reds here in game one, first of a three game series. And then Tampa Bay comes in for four, including a double header, a scheduled double dip on Saturday. Kike able to walk a base at a strikeout tonight. As we take it to the bottom of the ninth inning. Cubs trying to beat Tampa Bay in Chicago, two to one Cubs, eighth inning. Baltimore did win. They defeated the Guardians of Cleveland, eight to five at Camden Yards. Toronto one two they down Milwaukee seven to two. Tell you what that AL Central that is that is feasting right there. I mean you're still everyone's still in it except for maybe Kansas City. Liner to right field Fairchild with the grab. Kike retired one away. I mean Minnesota is the only team in that division with a winning record. And they're barely over 500. Yeah. 28-26. Yeah, the story of the night has just been, you know, a lot of pitches being thrown. One shot. I was wrong. It was 199 pitches thrown by the Red Sox tonight. 199. Wow. That's a lot. Too many. Yeah, Reese McGuire is definitely going to be a little sore tomorrow. Bayo got out of the gate slowly. Faced six men. The first thing walked two, and then he gave a couple of hits in the second inning. It was an error that didn't help him in a base hit in the next inning. Did a good job in the fourth inning pitching around a triple, but by the end of four, he had thrown 97 pitches in the game, and he was only one to nothing. He was, you know, as you said, wait. He did a great job holding off the pressure of giving up way more. He could have given up a lot more. But to throw 97 pitches through four innings and only give up one run, it's pretty pretty impressive. Cincinnati would get another run in the fifth, one more in the sixth, and then blew it open with five and seven. Added another in the eighth. So work to be done for the youngster Bale. Red Sox defeat tonight would drop the Sox to 28 26. Valdez with an infield hit last time up. It's one he really needed. He would score one of three Red Sox runs that they got in seventh inning. We'll see if that base hit got him rolling. Yeah, the 3 2 from Salazar. Went around the plate and he walked him. 
Well, good at bat there. Yeah, it's nine to three. You know, got to take the little things. But you know, after you've been struggling for a little bit, you get that little knock on a swing and bunt, foul off some pitches, draw that walk. Every little bit of confidence helps for the next few days. That's one thing about the Red Sox. They don't give any at bats away, especially if they're getting beat nine to three. Run it goes. Reese with a wall ball double that drove in a run in the seventh inning. So he's one for three. The Yankees are out in Seattle. They're underway in the first inning, and it's three nothing New York. All well, driven foul. So by today's standards of the pitch clock, this is a long game. <laughs> Considering how many pitches we're throwing, we're right at three hours right now. It's lengthy today. But yeah, there's been a lot of pitches, a couple of really long innings. And fortunately, with Cincinnati batting. Valdez at first with one out. Again, game two tomorrow night, that'll be James Paxton against Luke Weaver, 7 10. Thursday, as we broadcast from the monster seats, it'll be Chris Sale and Hunter Green. Driven down the left field line on the run. Benson to the corner, a sliding effort. It's going to be a fair ball. Got by him. Heading into third, Valdez. He'll pull up there, and it's another double for Reese McGuire. Kind of guided it down to the warning track, and Benson, in unfamiliar territory, tried to make a sliding catch. Yeah, this is not an easy <laughs> place to play. <laughs> As Wake's laughing because he knows I'm going to say something about playing outfield out there. <laughs> no, so I, I just know any any. Visiting player that's playing left field and a ball like that goes down there, it could be a disaster. <laughs> it's, it's so hard because that wall is so close to in foul ground that you have to pull the shoot at some point. So you're going to have to make a sliding play unless you want to break something. Tapia. <laughs> I thought for sure you're in. <laughs> no. <sighs> Ryan Mella, this one with two doubles. McGuire also now two doubles. That's Base it could mean a couple. Same worst oh. over there. Wow. Thank God those nets are up now. Oh yeah. Mm. I'm talking about foul balls in the dugout. Remember the day when you used to, we used to lean on the front step? There was there was nothing there. Was there was nothing there. Remember? We'd sit on the second step and put our arms and just kind of chill and watch the game. Bounding ball through for a base hit. Hey. One run is in. McGuire will stop at third. Toppy has had a good night individually. That's his third hit. His second RBI, and it's now nine to four. Yeah, three for five day. For the bright spot at the top of that order. These are the best hits too. Just chop it into the ground and find a hole. Get that RBI knock. Sometimes better to be lucky than good. Reds pitching coach Derek Johnson out to the hill. So the first three hit game this season for Rymel. Two doubles, a single, two RBIs, and a run scored. Earning himself some more playing time, I think. I mean, he's a huge asset in so many ways, too, when you're facing right. He's got a heavy, you know, lefty lineup in there. But his pitch hit ability. I mean, the guy puts together good at bats when you put him in there late in the game for those matchups. He's a tough out. He's also one of those players, too, that when he was a starter with Colorado, it just didn't shine as much. You're seeing a little bit more as he's matured and found his role. Here's Raphael with one down. Devers drove in the 500th run of his career in the seventh inning with a base hit. I mean, they're one swing at the bat from. This being interesting. Yep. Almost got through. Stopped by Stevenson. 
five run game at the moment. Red Sox do have 11 hits now. McGuire at third, Toppy at first. Foul back. Turner to hit next. Salazar's 2 1. That's up the middle for a base hit. That will get another run in. Reese McGuire will score. Toppy all the way to third and stopping there. It is now 9 to 5. Second RBI tonight for Raphael. Huh. Getting interesting. A little 500 and one now. But that's what I mean. That, that's what you're trying to get to for Rafi, right? You're trying to get him hot again. You're trying to make him feel good. That was close to being a homer. If he didn't roll over that just a hair, get under that a little. Well, here comes Justin Turner. Quiet so far tonight. 0 for 4. But two men on for him. Only one out. The best part is the panic going on in the bullpen now for the Reds. Alexis Diaz. You, you can't get ready fast enough when it's that big of a panic down there. Red Sox trying to make this one fascinating at the very end. They lead on the corners and a 1 0. Oh, yeah. That's hey. a base hit to right field. Another run is in. Tapia will score. Devers to second. It's 9 to 6. Keep the line moving. Mm. The Red Sox with four consecutive hits. First and second one down. Yeah, Turner hasn't had much today. Stays through that ball nicely. Shooting it the other way. Man, this is very interesting now because you're one swing away from I know. tying it up. You're never out at Fenway. <laughs> never. Now, Massa representing the tying run at home plate. Man, here comes the manager, David Bell. This is the loudest Fenway's been all night. I can't believe he's ready. Me neither. He's only thrown probably 10 pitches down there. And he'll get eight more out here. That's Julian Tavares style. I know, right? <laughs> well, they're going to bring on the closer. We're going to take a break. Red Sox sticking their noses in it. Only one out. And a tying run at the plate in Masa Yoshida, 9 6 Cincinnati. More in a moment. No, they did not. Got to Farmer as well. And now Alexis Diaz, the closer, is forced into the ball game. They certainly didn't want to have to use him tonight. No, they did not. And he got up really fast. So let's see what he's got. Hopefully he's still not loose yet. <laughs> Red Sox trying to make a miracle comeback tonight. They have scored three times in this inning. Scored three times in the seventh inning, too. And they're making a game of it with Massa due up two singles and a walk tonight. He's one guy who, all the way along, right through the road trip, was swinging a pretty good bat and still is at Fenway this evening, hitting 309. And he represents the tying run. He has hit six home runs. It's Devers at second, Turner at first. Red Sox closer is up as well. And ball one. That's what you love to see right there. Yep. Yeah, Diaz is another guy that gets a lot of extension out there. He doesn't throw as hard as his brother does, but with that extension, it gets on you. Brother Edwin, a little chopper foul. Those two have combined for 227 major league saves. Yeah, he's got the high fastball spin too, so that plays up in the zone. 
Got to make sure to leave it up. And if it's at that top, you better get on top of it with a short direct swing. Two and one. It's so hard to get ready that fast and come into a situation with where it's a, you know, a safe situation and to slow your heart rate down to be able to throw strikes. That is in there for strike. Even it up to two and two. Jaron Duran next. Red Sox have out hit Cincinnati 13 to 12. Is going on here. Keep the line moving. Massa with his third hit of the ball game. And the Red Sox have runners at second and third with one down. I'll tell you what, these comeback kids, they've done it a lot with the pitching hasn't done well the first part of the season. They do stuff like this. Gets a slider on the outer part. And he just stays through that ball and drives into that gap to score Raffi. How pretty was that swing? Wow. This could get very interesting with a speedy Duran up right here. Reyes becomes the runner at second running for Turner. So in scoring position the tying runs. In the bottom of the ninth inning Jaron Duran has got one for four with a double. Go ahead and end it Jared. And he's got the pop to end it. He was thinking about it right there on a big hack on a 96 mile an hour fastball. Yeah, but this is where you have to be very controlled with. I mean, that ball is going to get by you up top there. You got to tell yourself anything at those letters, you got to let go. <laughs> Easier said than done sitting here, yeah. but I'll tell you what. That was a good take right there by Jaron. You got to set your sights right. Reyes running for Yoshida at second. Turner at third. Here's the 1 1. Bounder up the middle. Sending the runner home. It's picked down on to first for the out. Turner does score. Down to third is Reyes. 9 8 with two down. And Casas coming up. Trying to tie the ball game. The tying run 90 feet away. What a finish tonight. He has gone 0 for 4, and he will take ball one. Wow, with nobody holding. Yeah, he's coming over now because yeah, he, you got to hold him tighter. You're not worried about Costas hitting the other way. No. Red Sox have scored five times here in the ninth inning. That's in for oh, a strike. Wow, that's painted. That's 98 too. Yeah, he's bringing it tonight. I mean, he averages around 95, but that is bringing it. And as a hitter, too, that ball looks down more than it is. It stays at the bottom. 1 1 to Casa. Swing and a ground ball foul. 1 and 2. Kike would be next. Yeah, make a mistake right here. Right? Hanging slider. He might go high with that fastball up. One, two home. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. And that ends it right there. One heck of a comeback. Red Sox get five in the ninth inning. They fall one shy. Wow. I'll tell you what, yeah. that offense wasn't there for a while, but I just love how this offense battles back. Came up short, but a lot of fight. I do too. I mean, I, like I said earlier, they, they never gave an at bat away all night, even though they struggled early on the game, uh, early on in the game. But to score five in the ninth to get to with one run, uh, it could have been an amazing night. Just short of that. Just short. But Cincinnati takes game one of the series, 9 8, the final TC and Lenny coming your way in a moment.